Now, if you and your wife don't mind a little walk, I'd like to show you all of my choice stock. The lines are excellent. Mr. Newton, that's the black stallion I was talking about. Now, that's Fury, Mrs. Landon. He's magnificent. That's certainly a suitable name for the horse. Since we saw him the other day, Cynthia hasn't been able to talk about anything else. Is he for sale? He belongs to my boy, Joey. I reckon Joey would rather sell himself before he'd take a part with that animal. Could I have a closer look at him? Certainly. Joey, will you bring Fury over here a minute? Sure, Jim. The perfect saddle horse. Hi, Jim. Hi. Joey, this is Mr. and Mrs. Landon. They're our new neighbors. They bought the bar VW. Hi. I'm sure pleased to meet you. It's a pleasure for us, too, Joey. We've seen you and your black stallion on the range. To tell you the truth, I never expected to see such a beautiful animal in this part of the country. Fury's the best horse anywhere. I'm sure of that. That's why I'd like to buy him. I'll give you $1,000 for him. Uh, perhaps you misunderstood me, Mrs. Landon. Fury's not for sale. That's right, Miss Landon. Fury's my pal. I couldn't sell him, not even for a million dollars. Well, that price is a little high, but um, I might give you $1,500. Come on now, honey, don't press the issue. You heard what the boy said. You're right. I'm licked. But if you change your mind, you know where to find us. Before you go, I would like to show you the horses that are for sale. Some other time. I'm afraid no other animal would appeal to me just now. I'm afraid this isn't the time to talk about other horses, Mr. Newton. She's got her heart set on that black. I can understand. I'll see you soon again, I hope. You're always welcome. You think she's buying hats instead of horses. <laughs> You've got the Landons wrong, Pete. They've got a lot of money and they spend their time raising horses to show back east. Well, Fury's one horse you won't get to show. Can I go see how that Pinot Colt's doing? Okay. They'll be gone all afternoon. I won't. Let's go, Fury. That was a pretty fancy price the Landons offered for Fury. It sure was. If it had been any horse but Fury, we'd have had a good sale on our hands. The way things are piling up, we certainly could use the money. Oh, all the ranchers are having a tough time this year, Jim. It ain't your fault things have slowed up. <laughs> things are not only slowed up, Pete, they've come to a dead stop. But talking about it isn't going to get my work done. to you. I was chasing a coyote. I didn't see a low-hanging branch. Well, you better chase yourself inside and let Jim have a look at that. You 
supposed to go under branches, not through them. Yes, sir. And we were almost on top of that Kyle, too. There, how's that? It's okay. It doesn't hurt anymore. You sure you feel all right? Sure. I just got a little headache, that's all. <laughs> You're lucky you've got a head. Now get your clothes off and get into bed. People bring you up some dinner. Okay, Jim. Morning, Jim. Hey. Mm, smells good. Joey getting up? Mm-hmm. How is he? Well, he seems to be okay. He slept well. That boy's head must be made out of iron. Morning, Joey. Morning, Jim. Joey, headache all gone? Sure, it was nothing. And after school, Fury and me are going after that Kyle. We'll catch him for sure. Well, don't run into any more trees, will you? Oh, Joey, be careful. Uh, I'm sorry, Jim. I guess this pitch was too heavy. I reckon I filled it too full. I'm sorry, Jim. No harm done. Here, I'll pour it for you. There. Bring the eggs, will you, Pete? You sure you're all right? Sure, I'm all right. I better go get my slicker. Your slicker? What for? It's so dark. It'll probably rain before I get to school. Joey, there's not a cloud in the sky. There must be. Otherwise, why is it so dark? Let me have a look at you. I thought you said the egg was gone. Well, it was, but it comes and goes. You better get back to bed. What about school? I'm class monitor today. We'll let Doc Bennett decide that. Thank you, Jim. Do you think it's really serious? It's possible Joey's got a fracture. Might have injured the optic nerve. How can you tell? I can't for sure. Not till we take x-rays. Will he have to go to the hospital for that? No. The county has a portable x-ray unit. I'll have him come out. I don't want the boy moved. I want the county hospital. Capital 1500. Look, if the optic nerve is injured, then what? Let's wait and see what the x-ray shows, Jim. Uh, this is Dr. Bennett. Give me emergency, please. Joey, how is he? I wish I knew. The doctor's still in there with him. Oh, well, don't worry about it, Jim. Little boys are tough. They're always bouncing and tumbling around. Why, you ought to see how they act in my classroom. Hello, doctor. Helen, what does the x-ray show? It shows congestion of the optic nerve, Jim. You can see where the fracture is depressed right here. It extends from the point of impact to the optic nerve. And that's what's affecting Joey's eyesight. What does it mean? This indicates that an immediate operation is necessary. Otherwise, Joey will go blind. Oh, no. And Jim, the longer we wait, the less chance there'll be of saving your boy's sight. When do you want to operate? And frankly, Jim, I'm not equipped to handle anything of this nature. But I do know that 
Joey will have an excellent chance of recovery if he's operated on in the next 48 hours. What surgeon would you recommend? There's at least a half dozen who are qualified. Martin and Stanley in New York. Shafter in Chicago. Chicago's closer. Shafter's an outstanding specialist. But time is essential. Well, maybe I can charter a plane. Well, is it safe for Joey to fly? It's a risk we'll have to take, Helen. Let me know when you decide, Jim. Doc. Yes? How much money will I need? Hard to say. Shafter's not cheap. But I heard he puts in a couple of days at the clinic, and that's free. You know I always pay my way. Well, figuring everything, about $5,000. Will you make the arrangements? I'll call Shafter immediately. We'll leave in the morning. Long distance, please. Long distance? I want to talk to Dr. Frederick R. Shafter. Shafter, yes. Why don't you rest a while, Jim? I'll look after Joey for a few hours. I can't rest with that boy in there the way he is. And here I am, talking about chartering a plane, making arrangements for an expensive operation, and I don't have the money. Well, I, I have about $200 saved, if that will help. Thank you, Helen. But I need 5000 Will you stay here till I come back? Where are you going? I'm going to run down to the bank and talk to Simpson. What if he refuses you? It's a bridge we'll cross when we come to it. Is Jim back yet, Pete? No. This waiting is making me as fidgety as a worm in hot ashes. Oh, Joey. Well, I finally got him to go to sleep. Do you think Jim will be able to raise the money? Uh, maybe. He's already got one heavy loan at the bank. We'll know in a minute. How'd you make out, Jim? I found out something today. We've got a lot of friends in this valley. They scraped up three thousand dollars. Three thousand? That's wonderful. But that still leaves you two thousand short. I have an idea where I can get the rest. Mrs. Landon offered me fifteen hundred. I think maybe I can get her up to two thousand. You ain't thinking of selling Fury. Oh, Jim, you can't. That'd break Joey's heart. Look, I don't have any choice. You heard what Doc Bennett said. We have to leave for Chicago in the morning. Oh, I guess you're right, Jim. Saving Joey's eyesight's more important than keeping Fury. I better go see how he is. You, uh, you going to tell him? Mm-hmm. Not till after the operation. Hi, Joey. Hi, Jim. What did the doctor say? He said you'll be good as new in a couple of days. Gee, that's swell. How's Fury? He's fine. Please take care of him for me, so he won't get lonesome. Sure, Joey. How about taking a nap now? Come on. Okay. Take him over there for you. No, oh, that won't make it any easier. I'll do it myself. Come on, Joey. Drive a hard bargain, Mr. Newton, but that stallion's worth two thousand dollars to me. Come on up to the house, I'll give you your check. I 
I'm sure glad that boy of yours decided to come down from that million dollar price he was asking. He didn't come down, Mrs. Landon, I did. Well, for that amount of money, I'd say you made a wise decision. <laughs> I thought you said that horse was gentle. Well, he is most of the time. Now, look here, Newton. I have no intention of buying a renegade. If he continues that... Don't like... worry, he'll settle down. I'll have him back in a couple of hours. We'll go with you. How is he? Not very hungry. Yeah, he won't beat nothing when he finds out about Fury. Oh, I don't envy Jim's position. No matter how he tries to explain the sale of Fury, that boy will feel betrayed. Yep. I'd sure hate to be the one that has to tell him. Somebody's gonna have to figure out a way to tell Fury he's been sold, too. I got a hunch he ain't gonna like it any more than Joey. Yes, I know. He's going after Fury. I better saddle up. I rode halfway to the bar BW and ain't seen hiding her hair at Joey. I better call Jim. I just did. There's no answer. He's run away, Jim. I think you overheard Pete and me talking about your selling Fury. That makes two runaways. Your boy and our horse. Just what's the connection? A very good one. Joey and Fury love each other and they belong together. But Joey's lost out there and we've got to find him. Saddle up, Pete. Mr. Newton, are you sure your boy knows about your selling Fury? Mrs. Landon, I'm a horse rancher. Selling horses is my business. Jim! You could have been killed running away like that. Oh, watch you, Garrett. You were going to sell Fury. Joey, I didn't have any choice. You need an operation, and selling Fury is the only way I could get the money. I don't want an operation. I want Fury. Now listen to me, Joey. Listen, I couldn't tell you this before, but you have to have the operation right away. Why? You said I'd be OK in a couple of days. You will but only after the operation. Otherwise, Doc... Doc Bennett says you may never be able to see again. Do you understand what that means? Sure, I understand. But I wouldn't care if I could see or not, if Fury wasn't around. 
He's my pal. We help each other when we're in trouble. We belong to each other. You always said that. And you said you'd never sell him. Because he's mine. And we're not staying. I only came to get my clothes. And we're going far away where nobody can find us. And nobody will ever sell him again. You don't have to do that, Joey. I know I was wrong to try to sell Fury. <laughs> We'll find another way to get that money. Just a minute, Mr. Newton. You don't right to destroy that check. You made a deal with us, even if it was illegal. What are you talking about? Well, you sold us that horse when all the time it really belongs to that boy there. And no one has a right to separate those two. You keep that check, Mr. Newton, as a deposit. Richard and I will be needing some good breeding stock, and we might as well buy it from the Broken Wheel Ranch. You mean you don't want Jerry? I guess we'll just have to get along with plain, ordinary horses. Gosh, thanks. That's great. I, I mean, I, 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 I think what he means is thanks. Thanks a lot. at least another week. If you want to pet Fury, he can come over to you. Fury! Sure great to see you, Fury. And I'm never going to let you out of my sight again.